Okay, so we got the revelation, and yeah, that's pretty much the focus of this episode. I mean, not like a ton happens, but at the same time, it's a pretty big deal what you find out, um, or at least a good start to uh, what I'm guessing is going to be the villain. It looks like it's going to be our villain. Uh, this is the episode where Korra... Um, uh, you know, she's training with her two, uh, her two new teammates now, and she's also training, uh, uh, continuing to train with her master, and she sort of has that method of going through the spinny doors, whatever that is, she has that down better. I guess they got new ones, because <laughs> I'm right, she burned the last ones. Um, so she's getting the training down, but, uh, they're short on money. Uh, they're finding it really tough to survive and get cash, so sort of this old gang friend comes to one of the team members and offers them a chance to, you know, just not do anything illegal, just, you know, a job, you know, very 40s New York <laughs> kind of stuff. So, um, so he gets captured, though, by these bad guys and Korra and uh, Mako go, and they try to find out what happens to him. They find that he's brought to this place where uh, the villain, this masked villain, uh, is starting this big revolution against Benders. They see Benders as really bad, and they, they want to be the great equalizers because they're given these advantages, and they're allowed to push people around and call all the shots, and that's not fair, so they want to find out a way to stop that, and this guy has found a way to take bending away, which has never been done before except by Aang, I think. I don't know if anyone else has done it, but uh, as far as I know, Aang's the only one that's done it, so this is like an impossible feat. Uh, so they get the guy out, uh, they get the, the teammate out, but they now know there's this great big threat, and this is like what started off as sort of like the small protest and just this these people bitching and yelling is now like a legit dangerous movement, you know, that could turn into, like, this big uprising. So, uh, yeah, this is definitely different than Avatar, <laughs> which I, I like. I, I like that they're going this different direction. Um, the one thing that I do miss, uh, I'm fine with all the changes, I do find the one thing I miss that I, I think they're going to keep going with is that you're kind of stuck in the city. What I liked about Avatar is they're always trying to get to some place, or they arrive at a place and they look around the place. Here, it's mainly the city, and you can see different parts of the city, um, but it's still the city. You sort of see one part of it, you get kind of the general idea. Unless they're going to do like sort of how New York really is, where they have sort of these different parts of the city and each sort of have their different attitude and a different design and stuff, but so far it kind of looks the same. It looks impressive. Like I said, the animation's like, holy shit. But I do sort of miss that that essence of traveling from place to place. Um, you know, where originally it was seeing these places for the first time and introducing you to this world, and then, whatever, next week you'd be introduced to a new world. Uh, here, you could do that again, because you could go to these places again and see how they've evolved. Uh, see how they've changed. And, and they do that sometimes. Like I said, they show certain characters uh, and their offspring and how they've grown up and such, but that is the one thing I do kind of miss. Um, everything else I'm, I'm still okay with because I like I like the idea of this story. I, I sort of said before, it, it's sort of like what they deal with children on Dune, where it's what's after, happily ever after, what's after the Messiah, the Chosen One, because the stories always stop. And it's like, yes, and they all lived happily ever after. Bullshit, that doesn't happen. You know, what are the problems that are going to come after that? And I like stories that do that. And that is what this is doing. And this seems like something that would happen, where you sort of have, you know, and you see this happen in our culture all the time, where you come from something that's really bad, you know, whatever, a war or a depression or something that's really terrible, and then when things sort of even out, there's still these problems that arise. They're just new problems. And they're problems that, from before, you wouldn't even think of, or if anyone was even to try... If anyone was even to say the benders are bad or threatening our way back then, you know, back in the Avatar days, nobody would be like, what are you talking about? They're the only ones that can, like, save us right now. And But now that they have been saved and time has moved on, there's sort of this this different problem that has risen, which is, are they given too much of an advantage or too much power? Um, and some have abused the power. I mean, hell, the Fire Nation and Avatar, of course, abused the power. So it's, it's an argument that you can see where they're coming from, which I like. Now, of course, they're going to an extreme. They're saying, oh, benders are like this, oh, blah, 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 and that's an extreme, but that 
often happens when people are very angry at stuff or get pushed around or whatever when others are using the extreme that just spreads more extremes and that's not the best thing to do uh you know again that's why i like the idea of the avatar coming in and bringing balance here this is a different kind of balance that's trying to be brought here so i like that and i like that it's being done with a person who is already kind of aggressive and trying to learn more the sort of calm inner silence and being comfortable with herself and the philosophies and so on and so forth you know because she she can very easily fall into sort of one of these criminals even when she came in it's like you know these people were doing bad and she just fights them you know and, and kicks their ass i mean doesn't question anything she just beats them up and then even when the police come she doesn't try to settle she runs away and tries to beat up the police and so, so i this is a good story for her to fall into this is sort of a good predicament and i i hope they really have fun with like the challenges they can really throw at her um so but in terms of challenges like this episode seemed very much like just sort of a setup like okay here's our villain who looks like a cool villain uh it's given a good backstory it looks like um wouldn't it be cool if they take the mask off and there's like there's nothing wrong with them um i'm wondering if they're gonna go that route that'd be cool but i i digress uh you, you, you got this, this villain that, that's set up, and now you sort of know the threat, and you sort of know what the focus is going to be. And, yeah, I, I like it. You know, my brother was saying, he's seen the, the show all the way through. He hasn't ruined anything uh, for me, but he was saying that um, where Avatar was very much sort of like the Lord of the Rings, the never-ending story, you know, where it, it's the traveling movie. This is sort of like the Dark Knight. This is the city. This is the one location and how it works. And, you know, actually spending time, it's, you know, maybe there is something to that. To, you know, you travel to all these different places in Avatar, and it's great, but you're there and then you leave. You know, why not actually sort of get the inner workings of it and see how it comes about and what the different personalities are and the problems with just one place and really dive into it, which they did a good chunk of the time in Avatar, but here to actually devote a series to it could be interesting. Um, I, I wish... And maybe I'm just wishing the different parts of the city would look more different. You sort of go to one part of the city, you go to another, it's like, oh, well, that could be that part of it. Like, these five different areas of the city you've been to can all sort of be uh, interchanged. I mean, they look very similar. Uh, compared to Avatar, again, where you would go from one land to another, it's like, wow, totally different looking place. And you can tell exactly where you are because of how well designed these places are. Um... Yeah, but here it's sort of like, oh, were we in this part of the city or that part of the city that kind of look alike? So, I don't know. That's the one thing I like to see more of. It's like the initial design of the city is great, but when you're going to look at it for a very, very long time, I, I want to see if they're going to maybe try a few different variations with it or different areas. Because, you know, I've been to New York, and it, while New York is very massive and, and men, much of it can sort of look the same, uh, there's definitely different areas that are designed, you know, very specifically and have their own identity. So, I'd like to see if they maybe would try that. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if they're gonna have a little bit more fun with that, but, uh, no, it's st still good, still, uh, uh, having fun with it, and curious to see where it's gonna go, and, uh, just enjoying this new direction. So, that's about it, and I'll see you at episode four.